good afternoon everyone so do any of you all like wake up in the morning put all your tools in the truck and you know you start it and you get that little roar from your vehicle and you're like money <laughs> I don't know I know it's probably not economical or whatever to have a gas guzzler but I like it you know there's something about having a nice truck driving to your jobs it's like my office you know some of y'all spend a lot of money in your office this is my office but anyways my property is a little bit older 1970s and again it's at like a 20 1800 I think square foot uh, I'll look at the order and I'll tell you whenever I get there and I'm gonna start the Chris talk it's gonna be the Ted talk of the beginning of the videos and if you don't want this just hit that double tap on this edge and jump forward to the property you can learn about the property but my Chris talk today is about commenting etiquette for home inspectors you know home inspectors are very opinionated which that's our job that's what we're supposed to do that's okay but the way they write their comments is like degrading they're like you're an idiot you don't know what you're talking about well we're both right in a way right so if you think it's going to be degrading or you're going to harm that inspector's reputation on his own social media content reach out to him as a private message you know message them privately and tell him that he might be wrong so he can learn you know we're as a home inspector we're constantly learning the entire career of home inspections my dad's been doing it for like 25 years and he is still learning every day and I am learning from him and I'm learning from all the classes I go to so it's a constant learning apper you know career you don't ever stop because new things always come out but anyways that's Chris's Chris talk at the beginning of this episode if y'all like these talks let me know you know drop it in the comment section Okay, just pulled up to the property. It's 1960s, 1700 square feet. And uh, these typical homes are good for first time home buyers only if they've been well maintained. You know, you come across some that are not very well maintained, but even if they have a little bit of money to invest in them, still a good first time home buyer because after they come in and fix everything, it, not very many problems on the big scale can go wrong with these. I'm gonna eat my words a little bit there probably because you know if it has cast iron plumbing or whatnot But that's what I'm saying. It has to be up-to-date and maintained. Let's go and check out this property and let me let I'm gonna let you know some of the stuff I find Walking up to the property you formulate a, a, a pretty good feeling almost walking up when you see a brand new roof and some new paint uh, But sometimes it's not the full story it just gives you a good feeling right walking into the property it was pretty warm right away Walked in and AC is set on cool and it's 86 degrees. Ugh. It's going to be a hot one. It's going to be a hot one. This panel box is a little bit rougher than normal, but the main area I want to talk about is you have smaller wires on this 200 amp breaker. So these wires can overheat before the breaker trips. So this is an easy area for a fire to occur. So we're going to recommend for an electrician to come out immediately to repair this. I absolutely love infrared technology. I can really see, I saw this from the attic space, um, but you can see right here that you have just missing insulation in this spot. It gives you a painted clear picture and then also it's something the client can easily understand of where the heat loss is coming from or, or energy loss not heat loss sorry we're getting this throughout the structure there's no hot water uh, flow and the master in the hall bathroom too as well and with this no hot water flow it's only on the hot water side and we have low water pressure in the shower too as well we also have galvanized water lines so typically this means that there is not the pipes are starting to fail and uh, they might be looking at a repipe on the structure good looking water heater so now we know for a fact that the the hot water supply is not not for a fact but the hot water supply it's not compromised because of the water heater because we also had good water pressure at the kitchen sink too as well so you know we had good hot and cold water pressure and it was hot and cold so we know that there's some damage between the kitchen the water heater and the bathrooms 
You can see missing weather stripping on the door and then home inspectors are required to call out not fire rated glass on the garage entry door. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick recording. I'm probably gonna have to just review pictures and stuff in here because this one ended up being a little bit more work than I thought, but I'm just gonna talk to uh, some of you guys that are becoming new home inspectors or y'all are looking at becoming a home inspector. And you know, I always show us outside and it's cool and we're happy, but you know, actually a majority of this job, it's hot. It's like, it's like really hot, you know, and I'm in an attic that's not ventilated pretty well and you gotta walk all the way back there and uh, look for any deficiencies and problems. You know, the HVAC got a little bit more issues than normal, so it takes a little bit more time to report on that. And then you have galvanized water lines, so you take more time to really follow the galvanized water lines. And then there's a bunch of splices and stuff up here. So then you have to think it's a little bit dangerous too as well. So if you are looking at getting in this line of work, you have to realize that you are going in places where there's rodents, you know, it's hot, you bend, you crawl, you go through windows. So, you know, you want to take all that into consideration too. I'm going to try to get some more of the, the grimy, dirty part of the job. Cause look, I even climbed up this to get in here. You know, it's a little, you can get a ladder. You can get a ladder, but you know, I, I like to climb a little bit, but still, then you have to crawl in through this little hatch right here and uh, uh, still crawl in and out of it. So you gotta make sure that you're able body and you can do that and you're okay with operating like that for a long time. All right, um, I'll cover some more of the other issues that I found. So on this side of the property, we do have some foundation issues and you can see it right here. It's whenever you see these horizontal cracks that are wider on one side than the other. And whenever you start to see this, this should raise alarms, right? So coming over here to the other side of the property, you can see in between the window right here, you can actually see the wall moving away. So the wall is actually canting this way. You can see some separation in the veneer. You can see the window frame. You can actually see in between the wall and you can see it's flush at the base. So you know the wall is starting to move you also have two uh, vertical cracks here that are going through the brick. And the, re the question you wanna ask yourself, why is the wall canting this way? What, what is causing that? And the reason why I like to think about it, this is big picture stuff, this is really cool, is you can see the roof line right here, right? You have all of this water, it rolls down the roof, falls off, right here lands in this area with poor drainage all this water sits in this exact spot and just and just causes the soil to erode away expand at higher rates and causes this wall to move about an inch or a quarter inch and causing it to shift outwards we don't see a lot of stress inside because the the flippers did a pretty good job at patching painting and leveling the floors but this side of the property is definitely canting uh, on the structure so really good find from the home inspector side another find on the outside is you had wires that you can kind of easily reach this these wires should be in conduit they're not the proper romex wires for outside outside use we also have a uh, door frame that's completely rotted through. So you wanna make sure all of this stuff ends up in your report or uh, whenever you're a client looking for a property, you wanna be looking out for this stuff. Next area, they added in this back porch or this back patio area, and it's actually installed over the brick a little bit. This hasn't caused any issues on the inside for moisture issues, I'm guessing because of the large overhang, but this is an easy area for termites. So you wanna make sure that you pay special attention underneath this window uh, because they can be, un be in this wall and you not even be able to identify them until damage starts to expose. So I like to knock on the wall and hear if I can see any droplets or pellets, you know, run my hand across the frame just to see if I can feel any uh, damage behind the wall. Just on my wide pass a little bit, you can see that the it's a little soggy on this side of the structure. Got some dogs, sorry. <laughs> but you know, I like to document it. Even though it's far enough away from the structure, I still like to let my clients know that you have some drainage issues on this side of the structure and it is something that uh, you, you want to inform your clients about uh, whenever they're purchasing this property. There you go, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Um, so those are some really good finds uh, for the home inspector side. So I did eat my words a little bit. This one has a little bit of everything. Probably 
not the best for a home a first time home buyer with not a lot of cash on hand or they're spending it all on the down payment so maybe you you want to come in thinking you're like all right well if i do buy this property i'm going to have some repairs you know the hvac's not working they need a galvanized water they have galvanized water lines in place they need an electrician and you know they don't have water flow to this property so if they do want to purchase it you, they want to keep in mind that they are going to spend some money moving into this property overall it's I know that sounds crazy. It's still not that bad. You, if they are able to come in and fix this stuff, this will be a solid house for a very long time. I, I like the older structures. But uh, yeah, that's Chris with the action. If you like these types of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button and uh, catch us on the next one. And please leave comments of the type of content that you like and I'll try to get it out there. Thanks guys. Bye.